So you really think your longsword is better? Well, it is quite long. I don't think it's actually longer than it was in Astera. No, no, it is only by like a few centimeters, but I made sure of it when I gave him in the blueprints. Well, why would you do that? Uh, pettiness? Oh, it's fair enough then. Ladies, gentlemen, and masters of all ages, now that we are firmly into Sunbreak itself, it's safe to say that our weapons aren't really changing anymore. At least not until the next Monster Hunter game releases. And so I thought it might be fun to talk about how certain weapons have had massive changes from Iceborne all the way to Sunbreak. Talk about what they are, what my thoughts are on them, and if I think there might have been a better way to do it. Starting off today, of course, then, with the Longsword. First up, then, let's talk about Longsword in Iceborne. It was heavily based around a simple loop. Raise the level of your spirit gauge until you reach red, then use Helmbreaker, which was initiated with a poke into the jump itself, rather than nowadays where this attack is activated as a silk bind. The way this loop worked let players who are good at the timing literally just get to red gauge using counters, use Helmbreaker, then do one foresight slash parry, then do Helmbreaker again, one parry, Helmbreaker just on repeat over and over. And it felt incredible. Iceborne itself added in the EI sheath stance, which gave you a bit of a change to this gameplay, giving you a new counter that you could access pretty much whenever you wanted that would spend a level of spirit gauge if you mistimed it, but if you hit it correctly, it wouldn't spend anything. It did quite good damage with an extra pop, which added a bit of a secondary playstyle, which worked well with the original one. As sometimes it just isn't ideal to use Helmbreaker with the monster moving around too much, and in those moments it was always better to use this counter even when in red gauge, just for good damage at the high level of spirit gauge. It was fun, and it allowed the creation of one of my favorite builds, one that I lovingly referred to as Slug Punisher a stun longsword based around punishing draw, using the draw attacks from EI's sheath, hitting the head, and stunning the monster with ease on repeat. This build was incredibly strong, and it was quite unusual at the time, and I loved it. And the further into Iceborne that we got, the more it seemed like the developers wanted this playstyle to actually just be a thing in general, with the eventual release of Frostfang Barioth resulting in an armor set that gave a one-piece set bonus of punishing draw. They're smart, they knew what they were doing. Now let's talk about how the weapon changed and evolved in Monster Hunter Rise in Sunbreak itself. A lot of the bones stayed the same here, Helmbreaker and EI Sheath were still a thing, but Rise added the concept of silk binds and switch skills to all of the weapons, silk binds being moves with their own cooldowns in a way, and switch skills allowing you to change out certain moves within your toolkit for brand new ones. As a result of this, Longsword become pretty much the only weapon in the game to have one of its base moveset tools from Iceborne changed into a silk bind in Rise, with Helmbreaker now being locked behind Soaring Kick, a silk bind which had a reasonably long wirebug cooldown. And the main thing is that this meant if you wanted to use Helmbreaker to spend your spirit cage in a similar type of gameplay loop to Iceborne, you had to of course spend wirebugs. And unfortunately, wirebug recharge time simply couldn't keep up with the players who were good at parrying to level up their spirit cage. And so the playstyles sort of had to shift. One major shift here was the way that EI counter worked as well. Now instead of just being an extra singular pop of damage on a successful counter, put down a cool effect on the floor that then hit three more times. And they changed this move now now, to do nothing if you mess up the timing, but if you got the timing right, it would level up your spirit gauge. So this move changed from having the potential to spend your spirit gauge on a mistake to instead having the potential to level it up when you are successful. This means even more ways to get to red spirit gauge, and as I mentioned before, less ways or at least less frequent ways to spend the gauge when you get there, with Helmbreaker being locked behind wirebug recharges. Most importantly about EI Spirit Slash, though, was that it could now be done on repeat. If you successfully counter with this ability, you can immediately re-enter EI Stance, which is just extremely awesome and fluid to be able to do. On top of this, you can replace that Silk Bind that gave access to Helmbreaker with Sakura Slash, which I personally consider an extremely fun ability, but this move also leveled up your Spirit Gauge, and so we came to a bit of an issue, at least in comparison to the way that the weapon was played in Iceborne. Before Rise, there was a super satisfying loop of getting to max Spirit level, spend a level, get back up, spend a level, get back up, and go on and go on, and now we have access to even more ways to gain levels and sort of less ways to frequently spend them, which while not necessarily weaker in damage as being in red gauge itself gives you a nice damage buff to your general attacks, it definitely made it less satisfying of a gameplay cycle. As well, your other silk bind available, Serene Pose, was a way to spend
and Spirit Gauge, but required two Zwire Bugs to be spent in order to get a pop of damage that wasn't even very high. It was useful for wake-up hits on sleeping monsters, but it wasn't used a massive amount otherwise due to the Wire Bug cost, making it just a more expensive way to spend your Spirit Gauge than Helmbreaker even was. Then came Sunbreak, and everything changed even further, significantly further. They did it again! Now you can swap out the EI Sheath Stance for the Sacred Sheath Stance, a stance that is capable of spending all of your Spirit Gauge levels at once for massive return on damage without any Wire Bug cost, and all it takes is a really long time to charge it up. This is lovely, it is fun, and unfortunately to access it you have to lose the EI Sheath, which many Longstars users have sort of gotten used to as a part of their base toolkit as they've had it for years now. This was an answer to a problem, but an answer that created a new problem in itself. Thankfully, as well in this game, we also have access to Switch Skill Scroll Swapping, which allows you to technically have access to both Sheath modes in one hunt, and personally, this is my favorite way to play the Longsword in Sunbreak. As well, we got another Silkbind that we could use instead of Soaring Kick or Sacra Slash, one that is very simple Instant Counter, which gives you a Spirit Gauge level one successful. And then finally, a replacement Switch Skill for Serene Pose, which brings in Harvest Moon, putting down a circle on the floor that adds extra hits to any successful counter done inside of it. This way, it all comes together as two suggested different gameplay loops for Longsword players. One based around Sacred Sheath, where you just get to Red Gauge as quickly as possible, spend it all in one big attack, and then repeat, or one where you put down the Harvest Moon Circle and just parry over and over inside of that circle, never leaving the circle and never letting the monster actually hit you without actually dodging, just using your various counter options. Both of these are quite fun in their own ways, but in my personal opinion, neither of them lives up to the enjoyment of Longsword in Iceborne. Base Rise changed the weapon. Sunbreak tried to course correct pretty significantly, but neither one feels the same as Iceborne Longsword did, and I'm sure there are people who prefer this new style of gameplay for the weapon, but I'm just not personally one of them. There are of course things that I enjoy within it, but it is the loop as a whole that I'm talking about here. There was something particularly satisfying in Iceborne about the first couple of minutes of Hunt being about reaching your maximum power, getting sent back down just one level, then repeatedly going up and down just that little bit. You got to do your big meaty super attack super frequently, and it was entirely skill-based how quickly you got there, and how often that you could repeat said big attack. Yes, it was just down to the timing of a button press, but it still felt good. It felt like you were totally in charge, and it felt powerful. In Sunbreak, it just feels a bit different. The special sheath attack takes ages to set up, and then it is about five seconds of being into the sheath animation before you can even launch off said attack. However, it is an extremely enjoyable feeling to hit that attack successfully when you do. As well, I did enjoy the gameplay and base rise of using the EI sheath counter as a way to level up the Spirit Gauge, as opposed to an Iceborne where it didn't do that at all. Personally, I think my ideal Longsword moveset is essentially just the one from Iceborne, but with EI Counter leveling up the Spirit Gauge and also being able to combo into itself as it does in Sunbreak. That would be perfect. That said, there are a couple of other things from Sunbreak Longsword that I would love attached to that if implemented correctly. Specifically, Sakura Slash. The Silkbind in Sunbreak is just a ton of fun. I think this one could very easily be reworked as a way to spend your Spirit Gauge instead of as a way to level up the Spirit Gauge. Make it way stronger, make it do more damage per hit, and remove it being a Silkbind so it isn't beholden to Wirebug recharge timers, and then it could actually be a really satisfying addition to the gameplay loop that I loved in Iceborne for Longsword in a future game. Alternatively, as I'm not sure it would be done with the same moveset as that Sakura Slash change, it would be a bit too much in that case, bring in the Sacred Sheath finisher again, but in a way that lets you use it with EI counter as well. I think the Longsword benefits greatly from having multiple options on how to spend Spirit Gauge levels, preferably one that only spends one level and then one that is able to spend all of the levels at once, as a way to shake up the pace of the weapon and just let it truly have control over its own destiny, truly choose what you want to do at any point in time. So now the question is, what do you think? In order to make this a bit more interactive, we sent out a poll for your opinions on Iceborne versus Sunbreak Longsword, which you prefer and why, and so now it's time to stop talking about what I think about the playstyles of this weapon, and instead talk about what you thought. First up, to frame the conversation, the general poll results from 10,000 viewer votes, 67% Sunbreak Longsword against 33% Iceborne Longsword, which, based on my thoughts so far, I did find a little bit surprising. That said, I also understand all of the reasons for it. Technically speaking, Sunbreak Longsword is capable of doing everything 
everything that Iceborne Longsword could do except for Clutch Claw stuff, it just has way more options. For example, Alex Kogan had this to say, with the most important part mentioning the addition of switch skills, the fact that you can sort of customize your general moveset, and that I can absolutely agree with. It may not be Longsword specific, but the ability to change what you do hunt to hunt lets you make more varied builds. It lets you treat each monster as a different type of fight entirely without switching weapons, and that's just a lot of fun to play around. Axel Vogel instead lobbied for Iceborne Longsword, but in a way that says part of why Sunbreak Longsword feels as good as it does. Quick Sheath. This skill in Rise and Sunbreak is way more effective than it was in Iceborne, and as far as skills go, this one is nearly required for Longswords because of how the gameplay works. And so making the skill more effective just makes Longsword feel way more comfortable to play in general as a weapon. There are of course also comments talking about having access to the Valor style spirit combo from Generations, which I of course agree with. I've been using that spirit combo since the day I unlocked it. It just feels better than the base one. Aside from this, there was just a lot of discourse on both sides about Sacred Sheath. Some people love it, some people hate it, but most people agree that having it as an option that you can either choose to use or not use is fantastic. Having the ability to choose whether you want it or not is great, and that is what a lot of this seems to come down to. Sunbreak Longsword won more than anything for the ability that it gives players to completely customize their moveset to their own liking. And while I didn't say it before because I was just thinking about weapon specific stuff, switch skills in general are something that I too would love to transfer over to the next Monster Hunter game. All in all, I quite enjoy Longsword in both Iceborne and Sunbreak, but I think the weapon sort of lost a bit of its identity that it had formed itself when trying to adapt to the overarching systems in Monster Hunter Rise, Silkbinds, and Switch Skills. Of course, it is worth mentioning that Longsword was totally different even before the fifth generation games as well, not even having a Helmbreaker type equivalent. However, World and Iceborne Longsword felt very strong to me. I, I don't mean damage wise, I mean as a coherent weapon, as a cohesive unit of a moveset. It felt like it knew what it was doing, and in Rise it sort of sidestepped into being something a little bit different, and in Sunbreak they've tried to fix that by adding more options, and it's all fun to play, but I can't help but miss that Iceborne Longsword that I fell in love with as one of my favorite weapons within that game. I just can't say it quite lives up to that same reputation for me anymore in Sunbreak. What do you all think for those of you who missed the poll? Have you mained Longsword in either of these games, or both of them? Do you think it is better or worse now? What bits of it would you mix and match to make your perfect Longsword moveset? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye